In this video, we're going to learn the basics of using functions in Python. So functions allow us to define a block of code that we can then use in multiple places in our code. So for example, let's define a function called greetings. We'll have here def greetings and then open bracket, close bracket, colon. So this here will allow us to define a function called greetings. Then we'll indent a block of code here. This block of code is the function body. It's the block of code that runs when we call the function. We'll have here a call to print with the string high as an argument. Then down here, we'll call the greetings function. So we'll have greetings and then open bracket, close bracket. This will call the function. That means the statements inside the function are going to execute the block of code is going to run. So we'll save the program and try it out. And here we'll get high. Now we can have multiple statements in the function body. So for example, we could have here print, and then let's say, how are you feeling? Then if we save the program and run it, we'll get high, how are you feeling? We can also call other functions like print or other functions that we define from inside a function body. And we can include control structures like if statements or while loops inside a function body. Now, the most important thing about functions is that we can call them multiple times. So down here, I'll call greetings again. I'll have greetings and then open bracket, close bracket. And now I'm calling the greetings function again. So these statements here in this block of code are going to run again. If we save the program and try it out, we'll now get, hi, how are you feeling? And then again, hi, how are you feeling? Now, if I didn't define a function and I still wanted to run this block of code in multiple places in my source code, I would have to repeat that block of code in multiple places in my source code. That would make my source code longer and I would have a lot of repetitive code in my source code. Instead, what we do is define a function. Then we can just run that block of code by calling the function wherever we need the block of code. Now functions can optionally accept arguments which may allow the function to do different things. So for example, here, when we call print, we have this string hi as an argument. Then when we call print here, we have this string, how are you feeling as an argument. So this call to print causes high to output. And this call to print causes how are you feeling to output. So sometimes arguments will allow the function to do different things. We could have our function accept an argument. What we'll have here is a parameter person underscore name, where this parameter is a variable it's going to exist inside this function. And this variable is going to be set to the value we pass in as an argument. We can use this variable in our function. So here we'll output high, then we'll pass in person name as the second argument to print. What this will do is output high and then the person name. And here, when we call greetings, we'll now pass in the name of a person. So first we'll pass in the name Harry. Then in the second function call, we'll pass in the name Ron. Then if we save the program and run it, then now we'll get hi Harry and hi Ron. So our function is now behaving differently depending on the argument that we supply it. So we call these values here, the arguments to these function calls. We say that we pass the argument to the function. We call person name the parameter. The parameter is going to be set to the argument value. Now we can also have what's called a default argument. So what we could do is assign a value to person name here. We could have person name is equal to John. Then if we don't supply a person name argument, the default value for person name is going to be John. So if down here, I call greetings again, but I don't supply a person name argument, 
Then, if we save the program and run it, we'll get down here, Hi John. So we can have what are called default function arguments. Now functions can also have what are called return values, where return values are basically values produced by the function. So for example, we could prompt the user to enter a feeling in the greetings function using the input function. So we'll call input and we'll pass the function the string feeling colon. This will prompt the user with the text feeling colon. And the input function is going to return the string the user enters. So it's kind of like the input function call here is going to be replaced with the string the user enters. We'll assign that string to the variable feeling, with feeling is equal to the return value of calling this input function. Then we could return that string from our greetings function with return feeling. This will make the string here the return value of our greetings function. So down here, let's call greetings and we'll pass it Ron as an argument. Then we'll assign the return value to the variable Ron underscore feeling. Then we can use this return value in our code down here. So for example, we could output how Ron is feeling. We could output with print Ron is feeling followed by Ron feeling. Then if we save the program and run it now, we'll get here, hi Ron, how are you feeling? We'll enter in sad, and then we'll get here, Ron is feeling sad. So again, we can think of the function call as being replaced by the return value. So it's as if this function call is replaced with the string sad, and that string is assigned to the variable Ron feeling, and we can then use that variable however we like. So function calls can have multiple arguments and function calls can also return multiple values. Let's make an example. Down here, we'll define a function called operations. And this function will have two parameters, x and y. We can separate our parameters using commas like this. Then down here, the function is going to return x plus y. We can also return though, x minus y and x times y. We can separate these return values using commas. So we'll have here comma x minus y and comma x times y. So this function is going to accept two arguments and the function is going to return three values, x plus y, x minus y, and x times y. So down here, we'll call operations. We'll have operations and let's say 10 and five as function arguments we'll store the return values into three variables. We'll have sum, diff, and prod for product is equal to the return values of operations. And the sum value that's returned is going to be stored into sum. The difference value that's returned is going to be stored into diff. And the product that's returned is going to be stored into prod. We could then output these values. So here we'll have print, and sum colon, and we'll output the sum, and print, and diff colon, and we'll output the difference, and print with prod colon, and we'll output the product. Then, if we save the program and try it out, we could enter in sad, and we'll get here sum is 15, difference is 5, and product is 50, which is correct. Now we could also pass in a variable as a function argument. So for example, if we had here a is equal to 10, here we've defined a variable a and assigned the value 10 to it. What we could do is pass in a here. What's going to happen is the value that a stores is going to be passed to the function. So when the function runs x, is going to be set to 10. If we save the program and try it out and we'll turn sad, we'll get here sum of 15, difference of five and product of 50 again. Now we can also use what are called keyword arguments to pass arguments to a function out of order. 
So let's make a function down here. We'll have def and we'll call the function output and the function will have three parameters, x1, x2, and x3. And all the function is going to do is output the value of x3 with x3 colon and then x3 here. We can call this function like this, output and then no, no, and yes. And if we save the program and run it, we'll get here, x3 is yes. And that makes sense because yes is the third argument to the function. So the third parameter here, x3, is set to yes. Now what we could do is pass these arguments out of order using keyword arguments. So we could have here, x3 is equal to yes, x1 is equal to no, and x2 is equal to no. And here, what we've done is used keyword arguments. We give the parameter name, and then we assign a value to that parameter name. And then when the function runs, that parameter is going to be set to this value here. So if we save the program and try it out, we'll again get here, x3 is set to yes. Now for beginners in Python, we often think about variables as storing a value. So for example, we could have here, x is equal to 10. And we could say x stores the value 10. But in Python, it's a bit more complicated than this. Really, in Python, 10 is an object in memory and x is a reference to that object in memory. This has consequences for when we pass variables to a function. So for example, we'll make a function here called modify. And the modify function is going to have a parameter x. And what we'll do is add one to x with x is equal to x plus one. Then we'll print x with print x colon and x. And down here, we'll pass x to the modify function and we'll output x here. We'll have print x colon x. So a couple things here. This x variable here is different than this x variable here. But when we pass x to the modify function, what's really going to be passed is a reference to this same object in memory for the integer 10. And this other parameter x variable is going to reference that same integer 10 object. When we add one to x, a new integer object 11 is going to be created and x is going to reference that new object. So integers in Python are immutable. That means we don't actually change the integer object when we add one to it. Instead, a new integer object is going to be created. And here we'll output that new integer object 11. Now down here, this X variable still references the same integer object 10. When we output X here, we'll get 10. So if we save the program and run it here, we do get X is 11 when the value of X is output in the function and X is 10 when we output the X variable here outside the function. So this is how functions are going to behave when we pass immutable objects to the function as arguments. It's different though when we pass mutable objects to a function as an argument. So let's make a mutable object. Lists, for example, are mutable objects. Here, we'll make a list. We'll have L is equal to one, two, and three. So this is a list containing the values one, two, and three. We'll make a function here called modify list with a parameter L. And what we'll do is append to the list four. Then down here, we'll call modify list and we'll pass in L. Then we'll output the list L afterwards with print L colon and L. So again, this here is an object and L is a reference to this object. And when we pass L to the function, what's really being passed is a reference to this object. 
The parameter L references this same object, but the list is a mutable object. What that means is we can modify the object by doing things like appending a new value to the list. So L.append is going to append the value four to this same list that both this variable and this variable reference. Then when we output L here, we'll have actually modified this list that this L variable references. So if we save the program and run it, then we'll get here that L is now the list one, two, three, four. So that's the behavior we can expect when we pass a mutable object to a function. So this is the basics of functions in Python. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.